Daniel to do his dishes. Yo, welcome to Friday night. Equip Saturn and chill. Everyone done with their bathroom breaks and their dishes and leveling uh, their B doofs up. <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, yeah, thanks again for joining me on this lovely Friday evening. Uh, we're going to play some Saturn games, which is always fun. And uh, I don't really have too much of a plan tonight. I figured we'd just kind of jump around like we did last uh, last two weeks and, you know, see where the night takes us. Um, I've got one booted up already. It's called Hyper Duel. It's a really sick shmup by Technosoft. Um... It's really cool. It's um, I feel like it's kind of under the radar as far as uh, Saturn shmups go. It's uh, very expensive, Japanese import, so I do not own a copy. But luckily, we are using the Terra Onion mode to uh, play our games here on a hardware Sega Saturn. As always, I am uh, using my uh... oh, let's get it in frame. Hori, fight! Oh, almost dropped it there. Hori, fighting stick, Sega Saturn. Which is awesome. Um, and we are now listening to uh, Side Quests, which is one of the Equip Picks Bandcamp exclusives. This is a collection of, uh, of my B-sides that I've kind of made throughout the years, um, you know, going as far back as 2015 when I first started uh, Palace in the Sky. So it's a, a 2015 to 2019 compilation. It's available only on my Bandcamp. Uh, there's a lovely tape here for it. Let me grab it off the shelf. All right. Side quests. So, oh. with art by PJ Rourke. And these will be up for sale uh, when I start shipping out the new batch of tapes, which have just arrived as well. So, uh, the new bit, the <laughs> bleh. the new batch of tapes will come. Um, I'm waiting for the the final sticker sheet for the $25 tier. Uh, subscribers, but I know many of you have been waiting for a very long time. This is September, October, and November's tapes, so we have, um, there will be some extras of these as well. We have Curse Breaker Z, which is, uh, kind of lullaby versions of Curse Breaker. Uh, beautiful purple tape here. It's pretty cool. And we got, uh, Symphonic Core 88. This is, uh, my own... HD remaster of uh, Synthetic Core 88 using um, like real orchestral samples. Uh, lovely art by Vacuum Chan. And uh, of course, uh, Town Soft, which is my um, my RPG Mall Soft album. Uh, a lovely white yellow tape there. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I'm waiting for that final sticker sheet. Um, it's estimated to show up February 4th, and then um, I will reward all of your patience by shipping everything out. So, uh, yeah, what's up? We got uh, Sefi Starshine, 
How's it going? Rachel Pye and Junior, Shabroki, Whitaker Music, uh, Molotovich. Uh, I'm Whitney's by the way. I figured. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, yeah, I've always loved this wave this wave station patch here, and um, it is used in the same um, capacity by uh, fl on the, that truck and floral shop. Um, yeah, I can't remember what I first heard this one in, but it's kind of been with me throughout the years. So uh, this game is a Technosoft game, which means that it has awesome music. So let me get that uh, kind of cranked up here. And uh, yeah, we can we can start them up. And so I'm gonna play with the. Oh, I don't have my Hori pad plugged in here. Let's get that going. There is a Sega Saturn version and an arcade version. Um, we're gonna play the special Saturn version because it has slightly upgraded graphics and it has cooler music IMO. And of course, let's check the options to see if we can. Uh, put it on baby mode. Yep, we're going to put it on baby mode. We're going to up the credits on this, and we're going to up the initial ships. Because, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not a professional at this one, so. Hell yeah. Dip switches. Okay, I got that set up. Oh, nice. Does this have a music test? I love it when they have the music test. So sick. <laughs> All right. Let's rock. Saturn mode. Now we begin. And I'm going to give this some gain here. So this is sick because... You can transform from a little mech into a ship. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Controls are really responsive, super smooth. I kind of prefer the ship mode because it is uh, faster, but there are some advantages to transforming. God, the music is so good. So, I think I have rapid fire on. I need to turn that off. So yeah, there's, there's the robot and you can aim your shot. So that's the advantage there. So you'll see there's some like interior sections where you'll have to shoot stuff on like the ceilings and the floors and stuff. So it's, it's then uh, more advantageous to be in the robot mode. What's up, Mr. Big Fart? Yo, little Liam. Nope, I'm stuck in the corner here. Daniel McDonald, what is going on? Molo360, nice to have you. I wish that the music were a little bit louder. Um, before I had the mode, I had this rip that I cannot find anymore where somebody actually like amplified the music to be louder than the sound effects. So yeah, here's where having the robo mode helps because you can kind of angle your shots. But you just get more maneuverability with the actual ship, and it's a little bit faster, so I think it just depends on the situation. Though my options are doing a lot of uh, fighting for me, which is nice. It's 
ripping soundtrack. Amazing. This is one of those nice games too where it doesn't like punish you for hitting the wall or the floors. Like Gradius is really bad like that. Good rule of thumb is when you see a boss immediately get out of the direct line of fire from their main cannons. <laughs> so it's safe to say that they're going to do some sort of crazy charge beam right away. Just like that. This one gets confusing sometimes because you get all the little helpers and the options and sometimes I like lose track of where I am on the screen. Yeah, Mr. Big Fart says the little guy is not pulling his weight. Yeah, they're, I mean, they'll, they'll help you out in deflecting hits and stuff, but they're not really, like, smart. I got, uh, I made it to the post office this week, twice, actually. Uh, we were having, uh some decent weather today so I hopped on my bike and rode over there and I got some fan mail so I'm gonna open that um, after this I got some cool stuff that I already opened but I wanted to show y'all anyway and thank everyone who sent it to me um, as always if you feel like sending me stuff my PO box is right next to my head over here at the bottom and um i try to check it like twice a month though i don't think i checked it at all during december i just didn't have time to get down there oh damn this guy's crazy i forgot about those little rockets He's going crazy with that. Yeah, Eugenio, what's up? Gives me blazing star vibes. Absolutely, me too. Oh, cool. Daniel McDonald says the soundtrack is on Zofar's domain. That's awesome. Check it out. There's two different versions. There's the Saturn version and the arcade version. Um, the arcade version is a little bit more like metallic and grindy. Uh, both versions are really cool. Shoot, I didn't even see what killed me there. Hard to see with all the bullets and I've got like three helpers now. Ah! Nosedive right into the ship. Man, this game is, uh, for lack of a better word, epic. They just don't make shmups like this anymore. The last, like, really awesome modern shmup was, um, that I played at least, was a uh, Devil Engine. Super cool. <laughs> Lorem Ipsum asks if I am Clanton. Uh, I am not, and I, I do not wish to be. So I love him. I 
Eclipse next thumbnail. I'm about to get this channel banned from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, those are fun. Very fun to do. I've noticed um, maybe a little uptick in viewership. So you can't blame me for trying new uh, marketing tactics. Clinton is the kind of guy that only gets about three hours of sleep a night. <laughs> Um, ah woo, you can actually, you can play this on a emulator. Um, there's an arcade version that runs pretty well on MAME. Uh, Seppi, this game is called Hyper Duel. Yeah, you can definitely run MAME on a PSP, so... Um, and MAME, the arcade emulation, is, is actually way better than Saturn emulation. I think Saturn emulation is still a little bit rough around the edges. It's like not full uh, compatibility. <laughs> can I borrow Hyper Ghoul for a Hyper Pop Emo Trap project? That's perfect, uh, Riley. What's up, Blashy? Nice of you to join us. We're playing Hyper Duel for Saturn. Unbelievable soundtrack. Is this it? Did I lose all my credits? That was it. This is always the level I lose all my credits at. Game over. Bummer. Okay. Well, time to open some mail. How about that? Love the glasses. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, well, since Blashy's here, Blashy sent me some stuff to sign and also sent me some cool pins. And I already opened it, so... Um, you have three credits, Rip. Yeah, totally. It's pretty harsh on the credits. I already opened it, but um, sent me some cool pins here. Mega 3D, MGA 3D Super Pack. So this is like some promotional pin for, uh, uh, looks like some early CG stuff. You know, I like that stuff. And uh, this one's by far my favorite, um, Pioneer. I found the meaning of life, the laser active, just so cool. Amazing. Thank you so much, Plashy. Really appreciate it. Uh, there's another one I got from Sega Octopus. Um, lots of cool stuff from Sega. I bought some games off of her recently, and when I went to the mailbox, there was a little present waiting. So I got, uh, she sent me some nice prints, some fan art here. Of me and uh, and my armor, love it, love it, so cool. And uh, also, just amazing uh, pic of uh, me and George rocking out from the Virtual Utopia uh, show. A um, couple pins in here. One's a uh, I don't know if you can see it. One's R twenty three X. My camera doesn't want to focus. And then there's another one too of me in my armor and I really got a kick out of this um, it's a Neo Gaia fantasy flip book so check this out oh my gosh isn't that cute so yeah check out Sega Octopus's um, shop maybe somebody can help me out with the link here I got my hands a little occupied um, but yeah she has awesome Awesome art, and uh, she has really good pixel art, too. All of the art that we use for our notifications on um, Neo Guy Fantasy podcast and uh, you know the subscription notifications and stuff for this channel are all done by her. So highly recommend uh, Sega Octopus. Thank you so much for sending me that nice package. Uh, I got another one here from uh, Angel Saucedo. hope I'm pronouncing that right. This one I have not opened, so... 
Let's see what this is. Okay. Wow. It's wrapped with a wax seal. Look at that. So cool. You've got great taste. Okay. Thank you. Let's see what this is. Suspense is killing me. Very well wrapped. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is incredible. Holy crap. Wow. The sword earrings. Just absolutely phenomenal. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, this will give me an excuse to actually uh, get my ears pierced. I haven't yet, so um, this is just so cool. I cannot wait to wear these. And there's a little card in here, too. Let's read the card. We hope you like these. Oh, it's from Sego. That's so nice. From Sego and... Vadra Noor Designs. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. I, uh, I honestly, I did not recognize the name. I didn't know who that was from. So now I know. That's incredible. Uh, wow. Thank you so much. Perfect. <laughs> I can't wait to rock those. Um, so I got one more here. And this is from PJ. PJ Rourke. So let's see what we got here. Got to be careful not to dox anyone. Yeah, I, you know, I've I've got a couple of actual, I've got some clip-ons, but I've got a couple of actual earrings that I've been saving for when I do get my ears pierced, and um, I've wanted to do it since like last year, but then. I got kind of freaked out by the pandemic and going into a piercing place, but one of my friend's girlfriends said that she would do it, and she's, you know, I trust her, and I would feel much better about just, like, doing that, you know, over at my house or her house or something versus, like, going into a uh, tattoo or piercing place right now, so. Okay. Hey, Kevin, I hope your hardware survives long enough for you to enjoy this. Thank you for all your hard work and great content. Wishing you good help, good health and happy thoughts. That's so sweet. Looks like a vinyl record here. Or possibly a laser disc. All right, what do we got here? Oh, Odyssey into the mind's eye. Wow, this is incredible. So this is the only mind's eye that I don't have on Laserdisc, and PJ got it for me. Wow. Thank you so much, PJ. This is so sick. Too sick. We're going to have to do another Laserdisc stream. You know what that means. Ah, yeah, so beautiful. Wow. So cool. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, I'm going to have to hook <laughs> I'm going to have to hook my Laserdisc player back up to the stream rig. So we can all watch this. Thank you, PJ. Incredible, incredible. Wow. What a haul. Y'all are too sweet to me. I do not deserve this. Man. So cool. Yeah, I, I also hope that it... Uh, every time I turn that thing on after not using it for a while, I feel like uh, it's going to implode or something. So Too good. Too good another little envelope in here oh wow this is way sick okay this is a illustration done by PJ of cursed equip look at that so cool wow amazing so so cool Sega Octopus nice of you to join we I just opened your uh, very generous gifts thank you so much I cannot wait to rock those sword earrings. Those are way too cool. 
still have them here. That's just in awe of these. Just amazing. So awesome. Thank you so much, Sega Octopus. Really appreciate it. Um, well, yeah, that's all the mail for today. Uh, just really cool stuff here. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get back into some games. What do you th what do you say? Let's uh, reset here to the menu and pick something else out. So we got um, basically the choice of anything on the system. Uh, there's a, a game called Kyo Flying Squadron for Sega CD. Uh, and there's a sequel on the Saturn, uh, Kyo 2. I think it's a platformer, if I remember right. And I always kind of wanted to try it out, so maybe we'll give that a go. Let's check this out. There's, of course, no shortage of sick, sick games to play. We did some Burning Rangers last week. That was awesome. Um, oh, man. Dedan Pachi... That's also that's another good shmup. Shoot, maybe we should do some, a little bit of the Don Pachi. I saw that and I instantly was like, yeah, let's do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. But how do you know what Blank Banshee looks like, though? Has anyone actually seen their face? Uh, Saturn Bomberman is amazing, uh, Cliffy. We'll have to play that one. Um, so this one is a little bit limited when it's not in Tate mode, which is, of course, when you flip your screen to the side. But uh, there's really no way for me to do that here on the stream. So we're just going to rock normal 4-3 aspect ratio. Um, yeah, Eugenia, the uh, Don Pachi is probably the best shmup. I will have to agree with you there. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Dadan Pachi Daiaju, which is for PS2, and I think the definitive version is on Xbox 360. Uh, so we'll have to do another. Maybe we'll do an all Xbox 360 cave shmup stream. That would be just phenomenal. So I kind of like the classic. How would you react if you randomly had like 20k viewers? Uh, well, Disney Vivo, I don't know if I would notice because I don't have like a Twitch screen up now to see how many people are tuned in. I should probably open a window. I would be very excited if I had 20k viewers though. So I can't remember if it's this one or if it's the original Don Pachi. But um, spoilers. At the end of the game, they reveal that basically the whole game was like a training exercise. And like all of the ships you shot down were like your fellow comrades that gave their lives to ensure that you have like the best possible training. This is really ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, I don't remember if that's in this one or if it's the first Don Pachi. So this one, you can tap the button to like rapidly fire, or you can hold the button down to do this kind of more powerful continuous laser, but it slows your ship down when you do that. You gotta love the bees. I just missed one there. Uh, I am once again playing with the Hori fighting stick. I find it a little bit easier to control shmups with it. I'm really excited um, as I got, uh, oops, shoot, backed myself into a corner. I, uh, I picked up a new PVM recently. Um, it's a broadcast monitor, actually, and I traded with a gentleman on um, Reddit. And they were looking for, uh, I talked about it a little bit on the Neo Gaia stream, but they were looking for a guitar amplifier. A Fender guitar amplifier, and I, I used to use a Fender amp, a uh, Blues Deluxe, actually. And I haven't been using it for 
I don't know, almost as long as I've been doing Equip. Uh, I've just been plugging my guitar straight into my guitar interface, or into my audio interface and using virtual amp plugins, so. It's essentially been collecting dust. I uh, gave it back to my dad in hopes that maybe he would get some use out of it because he plays uh, he plays bass and harmonica, and he sometimes likes to play amplified. So um, he said that it was just sitting in the garage, and I was like, "Okay, do you mind if I trade it to this guy on?" on reddit and he was like no not at all it's just kind of you know nobody's using it and i was like okay uh so i i hit the guy up and i was like listen i've got a fender blues deluxe amp and it's collecting dust right now you know is that something you're looking for and he was like wow that's the exact amp model that i was like looking at and i was like well you know it works great it's uh it can get loud or it's perfect for kind of, you know, quiet practice sessions. And he's like, I'm looking for a practice amp right now. I just got a Gretsch semi-hollow. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, well, sweet. You want to do the deal? You know, like, I, I know the PVM is worth a lot more than the amp. So um, uh, we're going to have to give this another go. Oh, shoot. I can add credits. That's cool. Oh, a Junior Morpheus donated $3. So essentially, you murders comrades who gave the... Yes, it, exactly. Um... I didn't get to read your message before it went away, but yeah, essentially you, you murder your comrades for training. It's really messed up. Could only come from a, uh, a Japanese shmup. <laughs> hey, Wizard of Loneliness. Thanks for joining. Glad you could make it tonight. Um, well, yeah, back to the trade story. Uh, I was like, listen, I'll leave it up to you to, to determine the value of this PVM. Because I know that they're quite rare and they're quite expensive. It's a, it's a Sony BVM 20 F1U. And he was like, how about you give me the amp and 100 bucks?" And I was like, okay. Uh, so yeah, I went back to Rockford last weekend. And my mom was like, um, I'll ride with you, you know, so you've got somebody to talk to in the car. And I was like, awesome. So yeah, me and my mom rode down to kind of uh, middle of Illinois, kind of near Bloomington area. And uh, yeah, I traded my guitar amp for a Sony BVM 20 F1U. And it's just amazing. It's it's probably the best looking like t tube TV I've ever seen. Um, my monitor that I use, the uh, it's, it's a Dell P991 Trinitron. Um, it's pretty sweet, but it's, it's much better for higher resolution, uh, stuff and 240p stuff. I don't know. It just looks better on, in native res, in my opinion, uh, with, you know, nice thick scan lines. So yeah, I've just kind of been in heaven. I've been playing the original Shin Megami Tensei via fan translation on Super Nintendo. Um... So yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying that new monitor. He also, <laughs> I, I brought a uh, an old Boss DD6 pedal that I had with me. The output jack was a little screwy and I didn't really feel comfortable selling it like that on eBay. So I was like, here, I'm just gonna throw this in to the deal. And he's like, oh, well here, have this. So he just threw in an N64 EverDrive to the deal. And I was like, what the hell? This is like, this is a dream scenario. Um, so yeah. Expect some uh, some N64 and chill streams uh, in the future. I haven't really played N64 in a long time, but there's just some really cool stuff that you can do with the EverDrive that I could not do before. Like, uh, you can play conversions of N64 disk drive games, um, like Doshin the Giant. Uh, there's a F-Zero expansion pack. Uh, you can play, like, rips of the GameCube versions of the Zelda games that were on that, like, double pack collection. The Master Quest and such. There's, like, anti-aliasing anti hacks where you can take the, uh, the blurring filter off of some of the games. There's control hacks, uh, like dual analog control for a couple games. Um, Mario Artist Studio, I feel like I could do a whole stream on just that. It's, uh... Just an amazing, like, you know, N64 art program that you can paint with. And uh, there's, like, all these stamps of cool Nintendo characters like Zelda and uh, Pokemon. And uh, overall, just a super cool device. And 
uh, was just extremely nice of the dude to throw it into the deal. I, I think he was just getting out of uh, he was getting out of gaming and getting more into music playing. Uh, so yeah, it, he was really really happy with the amp, and I was super happy with the TV. Uh, so yeah, that's my new my new daily driver. I don't have it hooked up to the stream rig right now, but it's in the living room, waiting for my return. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Starman noted that the uh, Shin Megami Tensei translation uh, was just finished for the GBA, which is cool. The GBA remake is uh, uh, really really fun. Wizard of Loneliness just picked one up. Uh, picked up one on Super Nintendo with a fan translation. Yeah, the uh, Shin Megami Tensei series, I've only really played Nocturne, but I've always loved the art, the uh, the Kaneko art, and uh, just the overall lore and the vibe of the series is so cool. It's all, you know, post-apocalyptic Tokyo, uh, summoning demons from a uh, computer terminal, etc., etc. Cool stuff. Stephen Hawking is a primary character in the games. He develops the uh, the demon summoning program. Really, really cool. Uh, Cliffy asks if there's a cool live music scene in Northern Illinois. Um, you know, when I lived in Rockford, there was a cool music scene. It was mostly like kind of emo, screamo stuff, but that was, of course, when I was in like high school and that was kind of all the rage. I think now it, it might be more like oriented towards like folk and indie rock, but every now and then, you know, pre-pandemic, obviously, I would see cool shows there. And Rockford is like kind of right on the Illinois-Wisconsin border. Uh, you know, Chicago, of course, has a really rich music scene. Uh, but yeah, I can't really speak for any anywhere else. Um, I don't know if, you know, like Aurora has a secret music scene or what. <laughs> Good question, though. Um, yes, this is uh, Dodan Pachi, uh, Kyle, and um, I am streaming from a. I'm using a. Um, oh, sick! You can just add credits with R. I am using a uh, kind of a dual digital analog setup here. So I've got the Saturn running through RGB SCART into the open source scan converter. Um, and this is getting a 4x upscale from the native resolution. Uh, that signal is being fed through an HDMI splitter into an HDMI to VGA adapter. So that's feeding my, um, my Dell Trinitron VGA monitor and it's also feeding the capture card. Um, right now, I'm actually just playing from the capture stream. Um, it's not, it's not totally lag free. There's like a, maybe a, I don't know, a couple of milliseconds of lag. It's not enough to really mess with me. Though I could probably be doing better if I just looked over and watched the, uh, the CRT feed here. Uh, it's just a little bit easier for me to read the comments while I'm watching the OBS preview window, so. Um, Wizard of Loneliness. No, I have not seen the anime OVA. Are you are you talking about Shin Megami Tensei? Um, I would love to to watch any sort of a Shin Megami Tensei OVA. I know there's a uh, like a Devil Survivor one that they made for the uh, the DS and 3DS games, but I didn't know that there was like an, an original Shin Megami Tensei OVA. That's awesome. Uh, Cliffy says, got friends in Champaign, and it's a lot of blues folk. Interesting. Fighting Island, welcome. I got your package and opened it up earlier. It's incredible, incredible gift. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to have to do another Laserdisc stream so we can all watch that together. Um, thank you so much. That was incredible, and I I love the uh, illustration, too. It's just so nice of you. Thank you. Yo, what is up, Trash Ghost? Nice of you to join us. Ah. Yeah, Kyle's right. This is a, a more tame Danmaku. <laughs> 
It's nice that uh, they let you add credits. A little bit more forgiving than other shmups. Ah! Oh yeah, there's Persona animes too. I forgot about that. So I, the plan is to play all of the mainline SMT games first, and then I'm gonna jump into the Persona series. Ah. Uh. So yeah, I'm probably like two thirds the way through SMT1 right now. By all intents and purposes, I am cheating. I've used the money glitch several times when I needed to buy new equipment for characters. You can like sell and resell your, your starting weapon, the attack knife, over and over. Um, it's like unlimited quantity, basically. Um, I'm, of course, using the one-hand controller and then I've got an iPad with the map and the walkthrough on it because they do not tell you what to do or where to go at all. And um, I'm... Uh, also, I figured out how to use save states on the SD to SNES. So it took one... There was one dungeon within a dungeon where you have to, like, go inside this girl's mind. So you have to go through a dungeon first, and then you find the girl, and then you go inside her mind. So it's like a dungeon within a dungeon. And I lost to, like, some normal-ass enemies that kept using bind status effect on me. And I lost, like, an hour of playtime. And I was just like, fuck this, I'm using safe, safe states. <laughs> like, I'm an adult and I've got other things to do. And, uh, yeah, maybe when I was like a teen, I would be like, ah, oh, no, you're a cheater, but, you know, my. I've lost my gamer pride at this point. I don't care. I like to put shmups on easy mode and use infinite credits, and, uh, I'm a dirty safe state user now. I just don't even care anymore. There's so many games to play, and at the end of the day, for me, it's about absorbing the art of that game and taking influence from it and just kind of, like, getting to experience it um, while still playing it. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't think that I could get through the game if I hadn't taken advantage of the save states, the maps, all that stuff. It's just so... It's so rough. They just don't tell you where to go. I can't imagine what people did when that game first came out. It's pretty archaic by today's standards. But I figure if I play all the older SMT games first, and then kind of work my way to the newer ones... Um, I was having a conversation with, with Keith Rankin earlier about this. Um, I feel like I will appreciate the like quality of life improvements that they've added to the newer installments. Um, if I, you know, power through the old ones first. <laughs> Um, Cliffy recommends Alkahest on SNES. That one looks beautiful. I've definitely uh, ogled some screenshots and videos before, but I've never played it, so... Maybe after SMT, I'll fire it up. I don't think we've ever really done, like, a SNES and chill stream. That would be sweet, too. Um, Starman, yes, I do have a copy of Panzer Dragoon. And Panzer Dragon 2. I've got the Japanese versions. Uh, the US versions are a little bit pricey. And I got both the Japanese versions for about 10 bucks each, so. I really don't collect US Saturn games. I kind of just stick to the Japanese ones. Uh, they're way cheaper. Uh, Wizard of Loneliness is doing the opposite. He's going through Persona and then working through SMT. That's awesome. It's always intrigued me for so long, and I've always wanted to play them, and I've bought so many of them through the years, like, with the intention, like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Persona 3, and I bought the original, I've had Persona 2 since, like, high school. Uh, I'm glad I got those then, because they're really expensive now. Oh, Keith Rankin is in the chat. Nice of you to join, Keith. Yeah, exactly. Sega Octopus said it best. Nobody has time for that. Like, maybe if that was, like, your only game, you know, I could see wanting to just extract all of the gamer juice out of it, you know, and and really just bathe in its difficulty, but... Yeah. Um, so yeah, the soundtrack is incredible, Cliffy. 
I did not stream Aegis Rim, Keith. The, uh, the game is so story intensive. It seemed like a, it would be a shame to kind of just jump in halfway through. Um, also, I think people would be very confused. But I think it would be cool just to stream like some of the battles because I really love the battle system on that game. Yes, Antique Mold. Pocky and Rocky. Love that one. I was playing that the other day. Uh, yeah, Lil Liam says, Tech kind of alluded to a similar philosophy of starting with the earlier Final Fantasy games before moving on to the newer ones. I agree completely. Um, somebody asked in the Eclipse Picks Patreon Bandcamp Discord if uh, they should play Final Fantasy VII Remake as their first Final Fantasy. And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> first of all, that game kind of like references itself, like they reference the original Final Fantasy VII in such a weird tongue-in-cheek way that I feel like it wouldn't really be as enjoyable if you hadn't played the original. Um, maybe in the same way that it, it wouldn't really be as enjoyable to like watch the Evangelion rebuilds before you watched the original. I still haven't seen the rebuilds, but from what I've heard, it's like... They kind of assume that you've watched the original series. I don't know. I could be wrong on that, but... Yeah. I, I, I like seeing a series progression from the beginning. And also, too, then you get used to the... Um, you get used to the spell names and the monsters and... You know, like, they introduce all of the iconic demons in uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Like, you know, the Pyro Jack and Jack Frost and, like, all the, the spells... You learn what they're called and like all the mechanics and stuff of uh, negotiating with demons. So I, I'm really looking forward to just kind of trucking on with the series over the course of 2021 and seeing how far I can get into them. There's a lot of different gameplay styles too. Um, you know, they've got the Devil Summoner games that are action RPGs. They've got the, uh, the Devil Survivor series of tactical RPGs. Uh, lots of cool stuff. I know they're they're doing a uh, kind of a Dynasty Warriors style Persona game, Persona Five Strikers. That looks fun. Uh, so there's definitely some variety there. It's funny. This game it looks a lot better when it's in Tate mode, like vertical orientation. And you can almost see there's like a weird bit of like pixel shimmering or something because they've compressed the resolution for the, the like, 4-3 aspect ratio mode. That's interesting. Hey, Rainy Cakes. Nice of you to join. Uh, I also really got to stream the new Alaste collection. I bought that for PS4. I think I was telling you about it last week. I got this sick, like, ultra deluxe set from Japan with the... Uh, exclusive Game Gear Micro. I'd love to show you all that. It's so cool. It's done by M2, who's like, you know, the best porting house ever. And uh, they actually made a brand new Game Gear game for the collection. Uh, game Gear All Us Day 3. God, this boss music is so sick. Uh, Mr. Big Fart, yeah, I did play the Resident Evil Village demo. I woke up uh, whenever they dropped that and booted it up right away. And uh, it's pretty short, but it's pretty cool. I like how they're kind of just taking the Resident Evil series in a new direction. It seemed like nobody... I don't know, I really liked 5 because it was like a cool co-op experience. But it seemed like nobody liked 6. Um, and to be fair, it was kind of just more of the same style of gameplay as 5. Uh, but I thought 7 was awesome. I never beat it. And uh, I'm looking forward to Village. It seemed very un-Resident Evil, but, uh, but I, I liked that about it. So, uh, Yeah, the controls on this game are quite good, Cliffy. Hey, Commodore256, thanks for joining. Take care, Walt Disney Vivo. Thanks for stopping in. 
Uh, what music? This is uh, Dodan Pachi for Sega Saturn. Hey, Daniel's done with his dishes. This is good news for everyone. Should always stay on top of those dishes. Don't let them pile up. It's just gonna stress you out. You know what's the worst is going to bed with knowing that there's dirty dishes in the sink, knowing that you're gonna have to wake up to them tomorrow. Almost unbearable. That, that's the kind of thing that'll wake me up in the middle of the night. And I'll just go do the dishes, no matter whose they are, just so that I can wake up and have a clean slate, you know? Uh, yes, Antique Mold, I have checked out Xenocrisis. It's a great game. I really enjoyed it. I played the Switch version, but I'd like to try out one of the, like the Neo Geo version would be sick. I want to support that guy. I wonder if I can just buy the, the Neo Geo ROM from him and load it on my flash cart. Oops, let's get some credits going here. Hey, what's up, Mort? Nice of you to join. I missed the top of that comment, but somebody was talking about Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, yeah, eight is, 8 is a pretty good starting point into the series, I'd say. 7 was my first, and then I went backwards to 6 and did, like, 5. And then I went to, like, 8 and 9. And then I went back to, like, 1, 2, and 4. And then, uh... Then they did the DS port of 3. I played that one. It's pretty good. Um, Lilium... I have only played the Resident Evil 8 demo once, so I can't really comment on that. Um, but yeah, the 7 demo, I do remember there being like a ton of stuff to do in that and like some kind of cool unlockable stuff. I don't know, the 8 demo seemed really straightforward. And it, it seemed like it was over really, really quickly too. Uh, Gabriel says, took me a while to understand Final Fantasy VII for its super mature tone and storytelling. Yeah, I think it took everybody a while to understand that. Uh, mostly because it wasn't... I don't know, it, the translation for that game isn't exactly, like, clear. Um, I feel like the story is, is pretty obtuse. Uh, and I'd love to try, like, a retranslation patch or something like that. I know there's a couple of them floating out there, and I've, I've really been wanting to give Seven Vanilla another shot after beating uh, Seven Remake. Ah. Yeah, Dino Crisis. I never actually played it, but I remember my friend playing it. It's like Resident Evil with dinosaurs, right? Oh yeah, Matajuro, uh, talking about the famous PT demo. Always wanted to play that. Didn't somebody remake it for PC? It's like not the same thing, but they like remade it in, in Unreal Engine or Unity or something. It's kind of cool. I know if you have PT on your PS4, you can like sell it for a ton of money. Always wanted to try it. I've always wanted to get a soft mod at PS4. I think they're up to, like whatever the late 2018 firmware was, and they've backported some stuff. But I, I wanted to, I want to get one of those strictly so I can play PT one of these days. Uh, Sega's finishing Final Fantasy VI. That's my favorite one. I think just in terms of story and characters and graphics and music, it's top notch. Probably one of the best RPGs of all time, IMO. Also a lot of good side quests in there, Molto, which is right. 
Sefi so started with eight, didn't like seven the first time. Yeah. I love eight. Eight's actually my favorite one on the PlayStation. I like eight just a little bit more than seven. Oh yeah, the Final Fantasy VII D-Make. I've always wanted to play that. Super epic boss here. It's Robot B. I've been pretty liberal with the bombs, and I haven't really run into trouble yet. Try to save him for like when I really, really need him. Oh. Yeah, this game actually is not terrible for a bullet hell. Uh, your hitbox is really small and the controls are really, really good. It's like really easy to navigate and maneuver. Um, I feel like it's pretty forgiving, which for me, just adds to the fun factor. This is a really fun to uh, play in the arcade. They have this one at uh, um, Gallop and Ghost. Randochi never finished eight. You know what, Randochi? I played with a guide. I had the uh, the strategy guide. I want to say I beat that one when I was in eighth grade or so. That was like one of the first um, PS1 games I got when I got my PS2. I never actually had a PS1 uh, until much later. But yeah, I remember uh, seeing the strategy guide. And that was the first game that I kind of just like played with the strategy guide the whole time. I totally, I became such a beast at the card game. I played so much triple triad. So fun. I remember wishing that they would have like a competitive mode, you know, where you could like play with other people. And I think they eventually did put Triple Triad online, and Square was all about that, like, play online service. Do you remember they had that domain playonline.com? It's like in all these early gaming mags and instruction books and stuff. It's funny. Yeah. The idea that you're vaporizing your coworkers is cursed as fuck. I agree. Uh, Secret of Evermore is great. The soundtrack to that one's really cool too. It's uh, Jeremy Soul who went on to do the uh, um, Elder Scrolls uh, Skyrim soundtrack. Though apparently he's a bit of a shithead. He got uh, pretty sure he was accused of some weird sexual uh, misconduct. I don't really remember the whole of it, but he's canceled. Thank you, Mort. Yeah, little Liam knows all about Play Online. Play Online was their version of Battle.net during the Final Fantasy XI days. Amazing that they got that domain, even. Playonline.com. That was like when you could get domains like that on the internet. Uh... Oh, Final Fantasy XIV has triple triad. That's sick. I did not know that. Uh, Gabriel, I've played a little bit of Hollow Knight. I started it one day on the Switch. And I probably played for about an hour. And for some reason, I never came back to it. I don't know. I really should at some point. It's been recommended by so many people. Ugh.
Oh, KOTOR has a card game. I didn't know that. I still want to play that one of these days. So many games, so little time. Yeah, Hyper Light Drifter. It's another one that I started and played for an hour and I thought was awesome, but for some reason just never went back to it. I got the uh, physical PS4 version from... I think I Am 8-Bit had it for a while. Uh, that game's hard. It's sweet, though. Yeah, everyone says Final Fantasy XIV is life-changing. I've, I've... That's another one that's just been constantly recommended. I'm scared of MMOs, y'all. I already play so many games. I feel like it's... Like, most of the games I play are, like, single-player experiences, too. I feel like an MMO would just destroy me. I'd just fall off the map. Like, you wouldn't... You wouldn't get any of these fun streams and no new equip records for years. <laughs> yeah, this game is, is quite nice looking, Mort. Right. Mr. Brokey says, uh, Deadly Premonition is the closest we'll ever get to a legit Twin Peaks video game. Yeah, I've, I've heard that one's great. They had it on sale recently, both one and two, for Switch or on Amazon for like 30 bucks a piece. I definitely considered grabbing them both, but I've just, I don't know, I bought so many games lately, especially like older ones. I went on kind of a buying frenzy to get all of the Shin Megami Tensei games. It just seems like they keep going up in price and... I uh, got pretty decent deals on most of them, but they definitely cost me a pretty penny. The uh, original Deadly Premonition was for what? Is that like 360 and PS3? Or was it just 360? Oh, Commodore 2562666. Hail Satan is always. I agree. Hail Satan. Living in. Uh, living with my headspace in Shin Megami Tensei land. It's just like I'm constantly thinking about if decisions I make IRL are like. Like, is this the. Is this gonna lead me down the chaos path? Or am I trying to follow the law path right now? Or remain neutral. On the original SMT, I'm going through the law path. The demon designs for the law demons are like really cool. There's just like archangels and... Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any like benefits to, to doing any kind of a path, but I just kind of stuck with that one. I'm just cheese in this guy at this point. God, imagine if you were like actually feeding your quarters into this machine. Just insane. Okay, so I think you have to break the shield by using the the constant beam. I've been wanting to play Alan Wake, too. I think that's also kind of a Twin Peaks-influenced game. There's certainly quite a bit of Twin Peaks influence in Control, which was... Uh, I've kind of spoke at length about how much I like that game. And uh, that game, I think, was released in, I think, 2018 or 2019, but it ended up being one of my favorite games of 2020 that I played in 2020. Man, this guy's brutal with a shield. It feels like I'm not doing anything. <laughs> it's so hard to dodge that. If I did play Alan Wake, I'd, I'd do the PC version just for the higher frame rate and the keyboard and mouse control.
Oh my god, Cave just released Dodan jackets with that bullets pattern? That's insane. Shoot, I gotta get one of those. It's amazing. Uh, Mr. Big Force says Alan Wake is great. The combat is whatever, but it's like playing a Stephen King no novel. That's awesome. All right, cool. So we finally got to the end of one of these games. It's always fun. Uh, yeah. It's crazy that we'll never feel that arcade coin slotting feeling ever again. Well, I don't know. Uh, you can still go to arcades. I think Galloping Ghost is, is open during the pandemic. I don't know if I would want to go there. I feel like the quarters are a little tight. Not, you know, coin quarters, but like the space in between the machines and stuff. Um, I've, I don't think I've actually ever read a Stephen King novel, Wizard of Loneliness. Yeah, the Remedy games uh, all kind of have Twin Peaks references. Max Payne. That was one of my first PS2 games. That game was sick. Started uh, it's like in the midst of the whole uh, bullet time phenomenon. It's like slow down and Game dive sideways over. through doors and kind of a uh, kind of like the Matrix. All right, let's choose something else. Get some more games going here. I bet you'd like the Dark Tower books, at least the first three. They kind of went downhill after that. Huh. I've never, um, never, uh, checked any of those out. Okay. Love that splash screen. Though I think I like the Japanese one just a little bit better. I have the We Have Max Payne at Home, a.k.a. Dead to Rights. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, Ed Jr. thinks we should play Clockwork Night, Police Knots, or Mato Mono Guitari. Let's try that third one. I've never played that one. I've seen it in shops before. It's always made me curious, so let's go for it. Where's my normal Saturn controller? Here we go. Um, I also brought in the 3D controller, but you can kind of see it's like the uh, the start of the Dreamcast design. It's actually quite comfortable. It's really, really ergonomic. You got these big grips. Uh, the analog stick leaves a little bit to be desired. It's kind of like the N64 stick, but maybe a little bit better. But yeah, you can totally tell this is like the proto Dreamcast controller. Uh, man, Sega, they just had, they had their shit together. No games found. Change the device. Maybe I just reset it. There's definitely games on there. Yeah, the, uh, Dreamcast controller is not my favorite. I like the Saturn controller a lot more. The D-pad is so much better. Nobody can argue that. The Dreamcast D-pad is a little bit... Eh. It's not great. Uh, the analog stick placement is not great either on the Dreamcast pad. It is an iconic controller, though. Uh, Randochi uh, never owned a Dreamcast, but his friend did. Go to his place to play Sonic Adventure 2, Fantasy Star Online, Crazy Taxi, and Jet Set Radio. All classics. All classics. Okay. Let's see. There we go. This one's for you, Ed Jr. This one is actually not uh, yellowed at all. It, it might look yellow in the light, but it's it's pretty clean. Um, my Dreamcast, however, is very yellow. Oh, damn, this is a compile game. Sick. I've honestly never played this, so let's see. 
Is this like a puzzle game? I see some demons. I uh, tried out the. Um, there's this stuff you can buy called Retro Bright, and it's basically like a hydrogen peroxide based paste that you can kind of paint your yellowed systems with and uh, leave them out in the sun or UV light uh, to eliminate the yellowing. Um, so you can get a this stuff that you use to, to bleach your hair, like hair developer cream. And it's basically the same stuff as Retro Bright. So I did that to my Dreamcast um, one sunny day. You know, painted the whole thing with it, left it out, and let it sit in the sun for two days, and then brought it back in, washed it off, and to my amazement, it was perfectly white again. It had totally restored the original color. Um, but I gotta say, that was in 2017, and now it has reverted back to the yellow. So, um, yeah, the retro brighting is temporary, unfortunately. This is sick. Somebody get that spam. I think somebody got it. Thank you. Oh, is this an RPG? Maybe I can't use my... Let's plug my other controller in here. Probably not going to get very far if this is an RPG. <laughs> Cute though, I love the graphics. Yeah, graphics are great. Definitely not going to get very far though. Unless it's like an action RPG. Or if it's got like an English patch or something. The visuals are too cool though. Love the big chunky sprite work. Yeah, a lot of those Dreamcast games are available on Steam. Uh, Shabroki's still waiting for Skies of Arcadia to get a PC release. Wow, look at this battle screen. Amazing. Stop. This looks so cool. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I'm loving the visuals for this one. Yeah, big numbers for a starter dungeon. Yeah, I wonder if that's like worked into the uh, exposition or something, like we missed something. Audio. 1,968 HP, that's crazy. Oh, bummer, Retro Arc is on a 30 FPS cap. Yeah. Emulators are great for, you know, preserving the history of games, but I just always, I don't know, I gotta have the, uh, I gotta have the real deal hardware. <laughs> are there any 90s Japanese fantasy characters without a tiara? That's a great question, Mr. Bigfart. Oh, thank you for moderating there, Randoshi. Oh yeah, Albert Odyssey. That's a uh, that's an action RPG, right? Uh, wizard. Yeah, I'm guessing that like part of the exposition must be something about how 
this character is like already leveled up and then you know maybe something happens where you get knocked down to level one or something these guys look super powerful but they're just getting crushed dig the battle music Holy arrow. Holy arrow! Let's try the other attack. Oh. Limit break. Damn, this is badass. Wow. Uh, Mort asks Kev, what's your favorite uh, Hantasy album? I'm trying to get more into the artists. You know, to be honest, the only one that I've heard is that um, I think it's called Abandoned Places. The, the Mallsoft one. That's really the only album by them I'm familiar with. So I like that one. Yeah, exactly. Molotov, it's like Symphony of the Night where you like start off all badass and then you get nerfed immediately. The fan translation for Symphony of the Night was finished for Saturn, so... Uh, there's a Saturn version. It is awesome. Ah, oh, it's like Lunar, turn-based. That's cool. There's a Super Nintendo one that was, um... Wow, this boss is insanely good-looking. Uh, this is Super Nintendo Albert Odyssey that was recently translated as well. Oh, yeah, Soul Hackers for Saturn. I actually got a physical copy of that in Japan during my first trip. It was only like 200 yen, and the packaging was amazing. I couldn't not pick it up. <laughs> Symphony of the Night death to load screen times are long and brutal. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I actually beat Symphony of the Night on my Vita. Like a couple... The summer before last summer. Maybe it was two summers ago now. I can't remember. Um, I started playing on PlayStation and I transferred my save data to the Vita. And ended up beating it when I was um, in the car. So I definitely used safe states on that one too. It was like, I just got sick of like having to backtrack so much. And also, yeah, I mean, those low, the load times were still pretty brutal even on the Vita. Uh, Gabriel, I'm looking forward to playing the 3DS Soul Hackers, but um, it's kind of a shame the music is so compressed on the 3DS version because the soundtrack to that is awesome. Oh, nicely done, Loli. That's crazy, Gabriel. That Soul Hackers, I, I paid like 75 bucks for mine. Oh, I died. <laughs> Alright, let's try something else. Yeah, I think, um, I feel like the announcement of the new Shin Megami Tensei game, like, brought the prices on those older games way up, like, recently, because I don't remember those being so expensive. Like, I remember seeing the Devil Survivor overclocked for, like, 20 bucks all day, and then all of a sudden I went to look for it, and it's like, you know, I, th I paid 60 for mine, but I see it go as high as, like, 80 sometimes. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so let's check out the translations page. There's a uh, Sakura Wars translation. That was kind of one trial. There's also a Magic Knight Ray Earth might be kind of fun. Um, Dragon Force 2 is a strategy title. 
Grandia is, of course, pretty sick. Vandal Hearts, Tactical RPG. <laughs> Mr. Bigfart wants to play Virtual Hydlide. That one is supposed to be pretty atrocious, but it might be kind of fun. Yeah, uh, Commodore, the, the Utena game, I think, is like a visual novel. Um, possibly with dating sim elements? I'm not positive. <laughs> Dragon Force was such a good band, they made a second one. Yeah, totally. Um, man, I guess we could get into some jank here and load up some virtual hydlide. Let's give it a shot. I've never actually played it. Uh, weird. I'm not seeing it on here. St somehow I must have missed it. I thought that I put all of the U.S. and Japanese games on here, but there seems to be a couple missing here and there. Interesting. Oh, too bad. Can't play Virtual High Blade. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, boy, there's a lot of cool games. I wonder what the Quake port is like. Should we give that a shot? It's probably pretty bad. Runs at like five frames per second. Some golf stuff. Of course, Panzer Dragoon, classic. The Japanese stuff is where it's at though for Saturn. How much time do we have left? 35 minutes? We could do, you know me, I'm always a big fan of the uh, Parodius series. Oh, Wizard of Loneliness played the Utena game. It's a light novel with dating. Interesting. Interesting. I have yet to play a dating sim game, but definitely not above it. Uh, the Makaros game is pretty sweet. It's a shmup. We played that one on here, though, before, like way back. Uh, it's crazy. There is, yeah, Command and Conquer that you can use the Saturn mouse for. It's pretty sweet. Um, Dark Savior is pretty badass. There's Soul Hackers. Not going to get too far on that one. Oh, Daytona Twin B. Yahoo Deluxe Pack. Let's do this one. It's so sick. Just a fun cute em up Good, clean fun. Let's use the... Uh, I'm going to use the... Quarry pad for this one. Get that all plugged in here. Yes, Starman. There is a biohazard on Saturn. There's a, an, an exclusive enemy, too. I forgot what it looked like, but yeah, there's totally an exclusive enemy for the Saturn version. Okay, let's see if I can crank up my lives here. Yep. Damn, they let you get nine. That's awesome. Yes, game level baby mode. Let's go. I don't know if there's a Twin B on the Switch's SNES app. I haven't checked that out in a while. There's a lot of these games. This... I can't tell because they kind of all look the same, but this kind of appears to be... This looks like the first one. Uh, there's a really great um, 3D Classics version of Twin B on the 3DS. Uh, depending on how you feel about the stereoscopic 3D, I have come to like it since I got my new 3DS. I could not stand it on my old 3DS, but um, it looks quite nice to me on new 3DS. So this game has a weird mechanic for the power-ups. It's like you see these little bells that come out of the clouds. You can keep firing on the bells until they change color, which will give you like different weapons and different power-ups and stuff. Thanks, 
I managed to get pretty far in the 3DS one. The uh, bell power-up system does make it kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to close out the night with like a side scroller or something since we've already done what like three shmups now We'll have to think of something That's cool you're into those visual novel games, um, Wizard of Loneliness. I've always wanted to try one of those out, like that, uh, what's the one that Tim Rogers just did that, like, crazy three-hour-long video on? It's like Tomeki Memorial Forever With You or something. That always looked super fun. Ah, uh, Pop and Twin B got the Switch release. Okay. I have that, uh, Super Famicom cartridge of that one. Honestly, I could not tell you if this is if this is the same one. This to me looks like a remake of the first Twin B, but I could be wrong. They all kind of look the same to me, but they're really cute. Oh, Mr. Bigfart, Shinobi Legions is actually awesome. Um, Shin Shinobi Den, as it's called in Japan. I have a physical of that one. It's got like live action. Uh, Cutscenes. It's really something else. Hey, what's up, Tupperwave? Nice of you to join. Yeah, Tokimeki Memorial. I also really would like to try that one out. Wow, that boss went down after like two shots. <laughs> Uh, have I played the Saturn version of Mega Man 8? I have not. I've only ever played that one on PS1. We could definitely give it a shot, though. I've always wanted to beat Shin Shinobi Den, or Shinobi Legions, or whatever. It's, uh... It seems doable. I always get to the same boss, and it just gives me a ton of trouble. They always come up with some great physical instructions with profiles of the girls to go for a page and then the guy characters get like one sentence. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who their target demographic is there. I gotta say, I'm a bigger fan of games that just have like rapid fire turbo than games with like a charge mechanic. Or, you know what's even better is if you have the charge on a separate shot and then you just have like a rapid fire for your main attack. I am kind of craving a side scroller though. I wanted to play that Keo too, Keo Flying Squadron 2, because that's supposed to be a side scroller, I believe. Can't remember what it's called though. It might just be called Kyo 2. I'll have to check the the game links page. Play both and prefer the Saturn version. It feels a little faster. X4 feels better on the PlayStation though. What's the really bad one for PlayStation? X6, where there's like like environmental hazards that are unskippable like you have to take damage to proceed and stuff or like didn't they kill off zero and x5 and then like x6 he's just like in in escape or in, like unexplainably back she's like i escaped oh yeah we we played uh puli rula on valentine's day last year eugenio but yeah that one is fun
Yeah, maybe we'll let's fire that one up for a little bit. That one's so weird. I wouldn't mind revisiting it. Puli Rula. Let's give it a go. That one looks like a like if Studio Ghibli made a Streets of Rage or something. But yeah, we definitely played through this one when I did like a cute games only stream on, I think it was Valentine's Day last year. Oh God, yeah, there was that new Bubsy game. So I think this one's called Ar Arcade Gears Puli Rula. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, they have Image Fight and X Multiply. That is so sick. X Multiply is awesome. Really cool shmup. Xing. Ah, uh, there's another sick like mech side scroller too. Maybe we'll squeeze it in called uh um Wolf Fang. Uh it's on PS1 as well. Oh you know what? I I brought the RAM cart in here. I wonder if there's like extra effects if you use the RAM cart. See how reliable my Saturn cartridge portridge is. Portridge <laughs> port RAM, yes. RAM, maybe I gotta reset since I put that in. Probably gotta reset. So if it goes to the action replay menu, then it booted correctly. If it doesn't, then it might not recognize it. All these Saturn cartridge ports are like so unreliable. Ah, I don't think it's gonna recognize the RAM cart. Oh yeah, Cho and Iki. I love that game. It is very, very weird. All right, well, maybe it'll let us play it without the RAM cart. I feel like it would be best if you could just like bypass the cartridge port and like just solder the RAM directly onto the board somehow. If there was a way to do that, I would. But it like messes with some games too. There's like, a one megabyte RAM cart and then a four megabyte RAM cart. And some games like Xing. won't play correctly if you have the one megabyte RAM cart in, but some like won't play if the, f I don't know, it's weird. They get messed up. Oh, it seems like I recognized it. Sweet. So cute. Just love the visuals in this game. So you turn like robots into dogs, and then you collect the dogs and the ducks and stuff. I'd love to know what the actual like plot and lore is behind this game. Yeah, right, Sad Weeb? It has that, that Ghibli look to it. So this one, I have played the PS1 version. And I've also played this on FM Town's Marty. But the Marty version, for whatever reason, I don't know if I burned it incorrectly or what, but it, it does not play the sound. I'd love to do a Marty stream someday, but it would kind of involve reworking my whole setup. Because the highest quality video I can get out of the Marty is S-Video. And um, the OSSC has no S-Video input. And that's what I use for streaming. <laughs> Why didn't she pick Mark? She has the vacuum. <laughs> the color scheme reminds me of that Final Fantasy VI anime. Uh, yeah, Legend of the Crystal. That is such a weird anime. 
unnecessarily uh, pervy. Gotta love a nice crystal world here. The music has such a cool quality to it. It's like very boxy, kind of filtered. Hit detection is very wonky in this game. Damn, look at that. They've got ray trace reflections in this game. Amazing. <laughs> oh, Clemens83 brought up Bulk Slash. Yes. Um, in fact, I meant to play that last week and didn't get around to it for whatever reason. So we'll definitely fire up Bulk Slash before the night's over because I really meant to play that last week. My friend Joe suggested it. And I didn't get around to it. <laughs> this should be FM Skyline's next video. This sounds like an FM Skyline track. These guys are like shooting spitballs, but they're like loading their spitball cannon from their torso. Love the crisp sprite work. Those pigs especially, they just look super nice. Especially the reflections. Amazing boss design. Love the music too. Uh, Gabriel, this is through an OSSC. I gotta say, I when I first got the OSSC, I got it strictly for VGA, because I had a Frame Meister already. Um, so I was just going to use the OSSC for VGA for, through my Dreamcast, but I, end, I ended up liking it more than the Frame Meister for just about everything else. For one, there's zero lag on it, whereas the Frame Meister, there's a little bit of lag because there's a frame buffer. Um, and two... The, uh, oh, this is very weird. The, um, the Frame Meister has weird noise on certain colors, like, especially, like, murky, murkier colors, like, uh, greens and browns. And it's just one of those things that you can't unsee. Ah, uh, yes, the infamous legs. I wonder what's in that door. Sick death animation. Yeah, I would say overall, like, today, the OSSC is a better buy than the Frame Meister. Um, Frame Meister, you get S-Video support, and you get Composite support, which I feel like if you're going the upscaler route, I don't know if you necessarily want to be upscaling composite or S video. I mean, it is nice to be able to stream that kind of stuff. But, um, you don't get VGA support, and that's where the OSSC really excels. So, yeah, I, I would recommend the OSSC over the Frame Meister nowadays. And they keep upgrading the firmware, which is sick. You can actually, uh,. They added like save, uh, save and recall of profiles, which like totally made the OSSC way more usable for me. I was having a hard time dialing in the uh, sampling settings, and uh, there's a guy uh, goes by Firebrand X who makes all the uh, custom profiles for for Frame Meister, and he did all the OSSC ones, so that's what I'm using now. And this looks awesome. Yeah, Lil Liam mentioned the OSSC Pro. That's kind of been uh, in talks for a couple of years now. I'm also really looking forward to the OSSC Pro. 
They rumored it's gonna be like pretty expensive. Like possibly like 400 bucks, so. I don't know, I guess we'll see how bad I need it when it comes out. <laughs> Since I have the uh, OSSC now hooked up to my streaming setup, I don't have one in the living room, which means that I can't play Dreamcast games in the living room on my TV. So I'd probably get the OSSC Pro for the living room and then just keep the OSSC Vanilla, or the OSSC Amateur <laughs> in here uh, for streaming. You won't need it, but knowing you, you still get it. Yeah, I have got a bit of a problem. I'm really looking forward to um, the new Virtual Boy flash cart by uh, Kevin Mella. It's called the uh, Hyper Flash 32. And it uses uh, an e-ink screen to program the ROM. It's really cool. Like you can store all your ROMs on there on an, on an SD card. But uh, yeah, to flash one, you use the actual a screen on the device itself and flash the ROM. And then once you flash it, the uh, a virtual label appears on the e-ink screen. It's like the coolest flash card I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, the, I guess since it's e-ink, it doesn't really take that much power. It's like once it's on the screen, it's just on there. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I pre-ordered that uh, the beginning of January, so I think it's supposed to come mid-April. You know I'll do another Virtual Boy stream whenever that comes in. Oh yeah, Clemens83 uses uh, Firebrand X's OCD settings for the Mega SG. That's awesome. Yeah, I joined the uh, Retro RGB Patreon. Um, so I've been, you know... I've been benefiting from those retro RGB videos and information for so many years. Uh, it was worth it, you know, for me for a dollar a month to support him. And uh, yeah, Firebrand is in the Discord, and Bob pops his head into the Discord every now and then, and it's a pretty nice, friendly page. Oh yeah, little Liam, the analog pocket pre-order. I was thinking about that yesterday. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sad I missed out on that, but I guess I don't have as much of a burning desire as I first did. I still would like to get one, but... It's a cool device. I don't really have too much of a need for any of the other analog systems, because they, um... Because I've already invested so much in, you know, this RGB upscaler setup that it kind of seems like a moot point to... Start doubling down on HDMI consoles. But I think they're very cool for people that don't want to, you know, they just want a nice Super Nintendo that you can hook up to HDMI and don't want to, like, spend an arm and a leg on upscalers and SCART cables and stuff. It's great for that. It's the craziest boss design. Sick. Amazing effects. <laughs> wow. Okay, so 12 minutes left. I would really like to show y'all Bulk Slash. It's such a cool game. Then again, I guess we have all the time in the world, you know, next week. But let's squeeze in one more game while we can. I love the Saturn. Such a cool system. I should start like putting together a little list for stuff to play for next week. Yeah, so that was Puli Rula. Part of the Arcade Gears series on the Saturn. Oh, Commodore just asked, what was the name of that last weird game? Yeah. Um We'll scroll past it, and I'll show you the spelling. Oops. I did not mean to go to prototypes. So, yeah, that one is... 
it's an arcade port and it's also available on PS1 and um, FM Towns and I think some older computers. So yeah, Puli Rula. So let's get into some bulk slash and then we'll call it a day. Oh yeah, Wizard of Loneliness says it's crazy that the Saturn couldn't do transparency of layers, but the way it looks like with the dotted sort of when layers overlap is nice in its own right. Yeah, it's it's like they have their own unique effect with the mesh transparencies. Wow, look at that 480i menu. High resolution. Gotta love it. Wrong controller port. I wonder if this one supports the 3D pad at all. I don't think so. Let's see if we can make this one baby mode too. Yep. Visual bonus. What's this? It's just art. Maybe you have to unlock it. Yeah, I love the. A lot of the Saturn games have the crazy, like, high res menu. Capture card loses sync. So might as well start off with stage one. Hello, Slobo Surfer. So this is like a kind of a hybrid 2D, 3D experience. So yeah, your character sprite is 2D. <laughs> so cool. So you like rotate the camera with the L and R. And you can also transform into a jet. It's been a while since I played this one. Sugoi. So you got like a nice melee attack when you get in close. This game's got a really cool aesthetic. Oh shoot. I'm sorry, Miss Anime Lady. I did not want you to get hurt like that. Oh, Rando, she says Earth Defense Force was inspired by this game. Interesting. I did not know that. Oh, there we go. And then, like, ship mode. A little bit harder to control. It's like they were still kind of figuring out the controls for a situation like this. Really cool though. The music's like not really anything to write home about, but um, I think it's still, it's pretty cool. Oh, hey, what's up, Daffodil? Ah, Keith, you're still here. Yeah, seriously, I got a one or two. Uh, Daffodil, this is Bulk Slash for Sega Saturn. And excellent use of your time securing the vegan kimchi. It stuff can be hard to find, I know. There's a brand we can get here in the States called Mother-in-Laws that's uh, vegan. But uh, other than that, it's kind of hard to find without the, uh, the fish. So 
So yeah, you gotta get that stuff when you can. Love kimchi. Yeah, the art style for this game is really cool. Very Evangelion-esque battle suit for the lady with the exception of not being such a tight fit, yeah. And my crush, Saturn Dithering, is here. Yeah, Dithering in full effect. <laughs> Sword animation is really cool. <laughs> Bulk slash is with the shops too and the prices uh, when the nuts are about to go bad. <laughs> Uh, Able2K asks, what is my favorite video game soundtrack? Well, hmm. That's a hard one to answer. I'd say the, the safe answer for that is Chrono Trigger, because it's just, it's a timeless classic, and it always holds up. And there's never, like, a time when I'm like, I don't want to listen to that, you know? So, I'm going to go ahead and say Chrono Trigger, but right now... I've really been listening to nothing but the uh, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim soundtrack. It's absolutely incredible. The whole thing is just like oozes atmosphere and vibe. It's so cool. Highly recommend the game. If you've got a PS4, pick it up. It's uh, definitely my favorite 2020 release that's not a remake. Uh, everyone should check it out. I was just talking to uh, Max Allison, um, records under the name Mux, and runs uh, co-runs Haosu Mountain, and he said he just picked it up too, so I'm super glad. The more people that buy that game, the better. I really do want to support Vanillaware as much as possible. Yeah, Commodore256 um, also enjoyed 13 Sentinels. Uh, amazing game. Super beautiful. Soundtrack is so good. Yeah, Chrono Cross, for sure. Um, I've yet to actually, like, play through that game, so... Oh, that's nice of you, Rainy Cakes. My favorite video game soundtrack is Curse Breaker X. That's super sweet of you. Yay. It's a little bit hard to tell like where to go or what to do. Like I think I destroyed all the blips on the map, but I'm just not really sure. I really need to uh, start working on some language skills. It's been one of those things that I am always like, you know, man, it'd be really cool if I could speak Japanese or read Japanese, and um, honestly, I've just never really put in the time for it. I took a year of Japanese in high school. It's cool that my high school even offered it, but um, I didn't really retain too much of the knowledge besides your basic, you know, Ohio and Sumimasen and, you know, just the most basic of basic skills. Oh yeah, for sure. The Katamari Damacy soundtracks are amazing. Amazing. And yeah, the 64 Bomberman soundtracks are really cool too. Hey, Zedra Cyborg. Destroy each of the reactor looking things. Thank you.
Interesting. Zedra, have you been here for a while or did you just join in? I know you're like a, a deep Saturn head, so... Be especially appropriate if you joined in during Bulk Slash. <laughs> Saturn deep cuts to the max. Nice. Yes, now is the time for self-improvement in the Northern Hemisphere. I agree. Uh, Clemens83 says, This looks like Virtual On meets Twisted Metal 2 by way of Neon Genesis. That is a good way to put it. GT4 Life. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> Azoni TV. Hold still while aiming. St hold still while firing to aim better. I lost my ear here. This was another one that I I don't know why I thought it would be cheaper. Um. But it's kind of an expensive one. I did find this one when I was uh, game hunting last time in Japan. Uh, but I think it was about 80 bucks, so... I'd love to own this one physically, but... Not gonna happen. Maybe I can slash his feet. Can't tell if I'm doing damage that way. Oh, he's got cannons on his feet. Nice. It's a wide radius there. You fire up and down when you're stationary. Oh, shoot. I did not see that. Damn, thank you, Zedra. Sick. Yeah, that definitely makes it a little bit easier to line up shots. Guessing I'm aiming at the big red stuff. <laughs> when are they going to learn to not make spider giant robots? That's a good question, Wizard of Loneliness. Okay, we're gonna go a little over nine because I, I must beat this boss. I can't leave y'all hanging like this. Just perch on top of this convenience store here and gun this guy down. There we go. Getting some hits. Kind of. The control is just a little bit janky. Stage two is Blade Runner AF. Should still play a little bit of it. I might just boot this thing up first thing uh, next week, Zedra. Now that I know how to actually play, thanks to your instruction. <laughs> 
I've been loving just doing the weekly Saturn streams. It's sick too, because then I don't have to redo my whole OBS layout. I can just, uh, it really reduces setup time when I do the same thing multiple weeks in a row. too far out of the draw distance there. Yeah, Daph, the textures are, are quite nice for a Saturn game. You don't really see, like, a whole lot of, like, stable polygons on Saturn, so it is always nice. Oh, Ed Jr. has a stream on Saturday. Okay, come on. Let me get a direct shot here. Time windows where you can get a shot and it seems so thin. I gotta get up on my perch again. There we go. There we go, come on. So close. Ah, I got caught in one of those. So close. Looks like he's invulnerable while he's up there. Yes! 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 Ah, phew. Alright. Amazing. Sick. Thanks for the hot tips, Zedra. Needed those. Uh, well, yeah, that's gonna do it for this week. Um... Thanks for tuning in, as always. Uh, love playing Saturn with y'all. Love spending my Friday nights with y'all. Uh, it's always fun to sit and interact in the chat with y'all. Um, thanks again to uh, uh, Blashy, Sega Octopus, and PJ for the amazing presence. Um, we got, uh, you know, of course, if you want to send anything, my, I got my P.O. box. Uh, oh, other, other side. Uh, right there. Uh, yeah, Bandcamp subscription. Uh, we got a new, um, like a Bullet Hell mix next month, uh, by my alias Bullet Heaven. Uh, it's gonna be like, you know, 16-bit shmup stuff, kind of a continual DJ mix. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you can, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, though I haven't really been active since September on there. I'm kind of taking an elongated break from social media, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'm always in my Discord chatting. You can join by uh, joining the um, Eclipse Picks Bandcamp Club. And uh, you can always catch me every Friday here, uh, as well as every Tuesday on the uh, Neo Gaia Virtual Desktop Experience stream. So, uh, yeah, it's been real. Thanks, y'all, for showing up. And uh, I'll see everyone on Tuesday. Peace. <laughs>